I had kind of a busy day scheduled for Sunday. While I was eating breakfast this morning, I got a text message from Rob asking if I could bring the engine hoist from Tommy's house down to Billy's shop so he could use it to work on his Mustang. So I went out and unloaded the slicks out of the back of the 64 while Billy was washing his Mustang. And if you know Billy, he doesn't wash cars for no reason. I was suspicious the instant I saw that going on this morning. Anyway, I load up June Pup and we head over to Tommy's house to pick up the engine hoist for Rob. Robbie's taken the opportunity to go down to Billy's shop and work on his own car for a change. Something that Rob doesn't often get to do and has been waiting to do for a very long time. So I was pretty excited to see what Robbie's up to down there this morning because the last time I saw Robbie's Mustang, it was light years away from needing an engine hoist. Anyway, once we got it loaded up, we jumped back in the truck and made our way down to Billy's shop. And by the time we got there, Robbie had been busy cutting, slicing, and dicing the front end of this Mustang off. When Robbie opened the overhead door to let us in, the dust was so thick you couldn't hardly breathe in there. Obviously, Robbie's not wasting any time. I couldn't believe it, but he's already got the tube front end on and he's ready to set the engine down in it. Pro mod. Yeah, gotta do something. Try to catch up with these streetcars. So we visited with Robbie for a few minutes and then I got a text message. Junior's got something up his sleeve today. I knew there had to be a reason he was washing and cleaning up that Mustang earlier this morning. He's called me out for a grudge race tonight on the street. And this time he's taken it pretty serious. He's even got Connor to come up here and flag the race for us tonight. Anytime you see that black Mustang sitting around my house, you can be sure something's about to go down. So I go ahead and check the bottle in the Malibu, put a bottle blanket on it, put a tune up in the controller, get the draggy ready, and take the Malibu down to the local speedway to top the fuel tank off with the 85. After a quick meet up at my house, we all head to the spot. Connor's riding with Billy in the Mustang and Tommy and Allison followed us in the Suburban. That was the first pass that I'd put on the car since I put this new nitrous kit and new nitrous controller on. And I was having a little bit of trouble before I left and I didn't understand what the problem was. I had been busy tuning on Billy's Mustang for the last week or so and just haven't had time to pay any attention to the Malibu. But after getting my butt whipped that bad, now the Malibu is top priority. Now it's hard to tell during a race exactly what's going on with your car, but I felt like there was something definitely wrong with the Malibu and it wasn't running like it should. So Billy and I took the car back up to the spot and made a couple test pulls just to see if we could hear and see what's wrong. For some reason, the nitrous kit surges, starts and stops all on its own. and it seems to be getting worse with every pass. So I take the car back to the shop, put it away, and call it a night, and then get back up Monday morning to dig into what's wrong and face Kenny Powers. So, how bad did you beat Billy? I did not. So, a couple things. Uh, first, I really should have turned the idle mixture screws out a little bit because when I cruise around this thing driving every day, I lean the idle mixture screws out so it doesn't slobber. If you lean the idle mixture screws out, it wants to bog a little bit when it leaves the starting line. And I can't really tell whether it did it or not because all I could hear was him over there, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> you 
you know, I couldn't, I literally couldn't even hear my own car. A couple things happened. Like he was in the left-hand lane. Connor's getting ready to flag the race and I'm up on the converter and I'm, and I'm staring at Connor, but out of the corner of my eye, I noticed that Billy's Mustang's rolling backwards. You know what I mean? Cause he don't have a line lock. And I'm like, dude, if that thing rolls back any farther, he's going to end up in his puddle. And I'm just thinking, oh my God, I hope Connor bangs the light quick because he's going to roll in his puddle. So Connor bangs the light, we take off, and Billy's Mustang's blowing smoke and it's sideways and he's banging gears. That's all I can hear. So all this stuff happens so quickly that I can't really recall whether this thing left like it should or not, but I don't think it did. Low gear was good. I stuck it in second. I can feel the ramp close in on the controller and then it just kind of laid over. And it kind of started to pick back up and it kind of laid over. And all this stuff's going on and I can't hardly concentrate on what I'm doing. I can't hear my car. I can barely feel what's going on. And Billy's over there banging gears and I'm looking at taillights on that Mustang. And I'm like, oh my God. So we got back last night and I'm trying to think, like I'm trying to go through everything that I saw and heard and felt in the car as I made that pass. And I'm like, man, something's just not right. So Billy and I went up last night and made a couple test hits and found out the wide open throttle switch was screwing up. And I guess Billy said in the in-car camera, uh, in my car during the race, you can see the wide open throttle switch goes to 0% and then comes back on and goes 0% and comes back on. And what that does is it restarts the ramp every time it shuts off and comes back on. So every time it did that, there was a three tenths, I had to, I had it set for a three tenths delay before the nitrous would even come on. So every time it shut off, it would delay the nitrous three tenths and then a second and a half ramp and then it would shut it off and do it again. So um, I didn't make a very good pass last night. Let's just say that. <laughs> so we're putting another wide open throttle switch on right now. So I got to get that fixed. <laughs> The only thing worse than losing to Billy in that Mustang is losing to Billy in the Mustang and not knowing why. I found out later what caused the problem with the micro switch and I'll get into that later, but let's just say it could have taken me a long time to find the problem with this thing. At this point, I'm just happy to know that the car's fixed and I can move forward from here. So now that the Malibu's out of the way, I turn my attention to the 64 because we're going to start doing a little bit of traveling with the streetcars, and I wanna use this 64 to tow an open trailer. So I wanna get this thing serviced and get it ready to hit the road. And I wanna get the speedometer fixed in it. So we brought it in the shop, put it up on the lift, Kenny got started draining the fluids out of it, and June Pup and I hit the road in the Malibu to go down to see Mark and pick up some shop supplies, oil, filters, and transmission fluid for the C10. Now I drive this car down there almost every day. But I couldn't believe when I got there that when I pulled up out front, Tyler could even tell that I had changed the idle mixture screws. Wait, what did you do? Turn the idle off because it's cold? I could not believe my ears when he said that. I literally just reset the idle speed and the idle screws last night. It's pretty bad when you recognize stuff like no, that. It's not. While I was on my way down, I got a call from Kenny telling me that the carrier bearing is going out of the truck. So I decided to play Stump the Chump. So my minions back at the shop tell me that my brand new carrier bearing in the 64 is going out. So see if you can order me in a carrier bearing. Well, I probably have one in stock. No, you ATS do Yes, I do. A carrier bearing I'm for a 64 sure. Chevy pickup. I'm thinking I got one on the shelf. Oh, I'll believe that when I see it. Well, you give me a minute and we'll find out. I could tell by the way he's staring at that screen and scrolling. I've got him this time. All right. Well? Well, I got to order you one. <laughs> <laughs> Out of that money I had. Yeah. It's a pretty rare thing for me to stump old Mark. Usually he can get me something the same day. But that carrier bearing's not that big of a deal. We've got plenty of other stuff we can go ahead and get done while we're waiting. Like getting the speedometer pulled out and getting it and the speedometer cable replaced. So once Kenny got done changing the engine oil, transmission fluid, and greasing the suspension, he and Uncle Bucko dove head first into the never-ending saga of the speedometer problem. They got started working on it while I was in the office doing some editing. And when I came back out, I find out the truck's outside and it's not done. Check out his non-maintenance mess. Non-maintenance mess. What? Lack of maintenance right here. What? Lack of maintenance? Yeah. No brakes. Sir, I've put 30,000 miles on this truck. 
And that's the first time I've had to put brakes on. Well, what's going on with my lack of maintenance? How's come the 64 sitting out there with nothing put back together? That's probably because if people are in big hurries and put stuff in there it shouldn't be put in there. Like the armor cable like 50 foot long when it needs to be 63 inches long. 67. 67 is what I measured. 63 was available. Originally, it ran down the back of the transmission and went to the speedometer cable. So when is this thing going to get put back together? Tomorrow morning. Next week. That's when Chumpy says he's going to have the cable. So now that we're waiting on parts for the C10, I decide to switch gears and dive back into the Malibu. In order for me to turn on both stages of this new nitrous kit, I need to hook up my ignition retard box to the nitrous controller so that I can pull some timing. So I drew up a quick schematic, wired up the two relays that I needed, and Billy and I took the Malibu back up to the spot to see what kind of an improvement we've made with the new nitrous switch and the ignition timing. Now that the wide open throttle switch is working properly and the ignition timing is able to be set on kill, the car is making a lot more power. Since the Malibu overpowered the tires on the first hit and I had to pedal it, I made a couple little adjustments and went up to make another pass. Even though the car had a considerable amount of wheel speed, I was able to drive through it and not have to pedal. Tuesday morning, Jeremy went down to Mark's, picked up a new speedometer cable and came back to the shop ready to do battle with the 64. Once he had the new cable installed, he went ahead and put the dash cluster back in the dash, hooked everything back up, and then it was time for me and the turd barrels to go down the road with it and see if it works. While we're going for a test drive, Gina Rose is down in Kentucky printing up the first batch of Vicky's 64 C10 pickup truck shirts with a quote from my dad, fix it, use it, wear it out, make it do or do without. And for right now, we're going to have to continue to do without a speedometer. So it's back to the old drawing board for Uncle Bucko. Jeremy tells me to go ahead and call Jags and order up a new speedometer gear. He feels like it's stripped out. So while we're working on getting a new speedometer gear, Jeremy goes ahead and starts working on the drive shaft, replacing the carrier bearing with the dog's help. Luckily, while we're in the shop working on this stuff, Harley was able to run to Jigs and pick up a new speedometer gear so that we can try yet again today to get the speedometer to work once we get the drive shaft put back in. Now, when you're working on antique cars and trucks, sometimes things go easy and sometimes they don't. This is just the way it goes when working on older cars that have had things swapped and things changed. And poor Jeremy bears the brunt of all the headaches. Harley comes back with the new gear and Jeremy installs it, thinking that he's finally gonna have this thing fixed. And I'm praying that that's the case. At this point, I'm just saying a prayer that this time I'll be able to start a project video and finish the project in the same video for once. But so far, that's not the case. The speedometer still doesn't work. So that's strike three today for Uncle Bucko, and I'm just about ready to pull my hair out trying to deal with it. Well guys, I'm giving up on the speedometer for today. I got some other things I got to get done. We also need to get Billy's S10 brought in here and switch slicks on it. It's got Mickey's on it. I think Billy's going to Milan this weekend, and so we need to put Hoosiers on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring it inside. So once we bring the S10 in the shop, Kenny goes ahead and pulls the rear tires off and starts swapping out the Mickeys for a brand new set of Hoosiers. And I head down to Mark's to pick up a new receiver for the 64. You know it's a bad day when I'm coming down here to chill out. 
Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, like this is the most stress-free thing I've done today is come to the auto parts store at A1 Auto Parts in Buckeye Lake. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Things must be bad. I'm just standing here looking at this. It says, try it. And it looks like the perfect tool for me to use on my brother. What's the price on this? <laughs> Jeremy's had me and Mark chasing our tails for two days over the speedometer gear thing. And it's definitely cutting into my productivity as well as Mark's employees. So which one of you turkeys down here sells the most stuff? Out of who? He sells the most. Mark sells the most. Of course Mark sells the most. Tyler's not too far behind and then I chase him as hard as I can. No, I chase. So what, what were you saying here a minute ago? You're, you're saying that Tyler gets all the gravy accounts? Like when they call, Mark's just like, here, I hand it over to Tyler. Yeah, he does. He Is that what happens? Gives Tyler the nice sales and don't give me none. Yeah, okay. So I here's what I'm going to tell you. All right, here's what I'm going to tell you. You ready for this? When I'm at my shop and I'm the boss and projects come in, I hand them off to the person who's least likely to f*** up. Hey, we're dropping truth bombs today, boys. They're coming down. <laughs> so what do you got for me? You got a hitch and a receiver? One hitch, two and five sixteenths ball, and Look at that pin. Locking pin. You know why I need that pin? I don't know. So that my hitch doesn't walk away. Oh, you have a problem with that, huh? Well, this is the second one I've bought for that oh, truck. I believe I've seen this one before. <laughs> Not the same one, but uh, yeah. So this will fix it. Guaranteed. So after I picked up my new hitch receiver for the 64, I came back to the shop and checked on Kenny, and then I turned and burned southwest, down towards Lancaster, to pick up a mother bottle of nitrous, so that I have some nitrous to fill bottles with back at my shop. And that's about the time the boys showed up to start working on the cars, and Vicky started cooking dinner. Mom Cam. Mom Cam. Mom Cam, what's happening here? We are going over the Falcon. Yeah. Getting it all cleaned up underneath. Just gonna repaint some areas that need attention. Just to kind of prevent rust. It smells very fruity in here. The citral does a really good job. Citral? Yeah. Yeah, it smells my like Schaefer's. orange. I don't know this is my Schaefer's. Schaefer's makes some good stuff. It's not sponsored. <laughs> we just got done putting the weight in it. Uh, setting it back up for street racing. Okay. Just gonna rescale it, redo the inner roll bar. Um, yeah, because it was last raced at uh, No Prep Kings, and where we're going this weekend's a lot different. Yeah, we're setting it up for back end of the track, so just kind of go over everything and check all the nuts and bolts. Let's try and figure out what setting he likes. Right now, he's on Super Stoker. Oh, hose setting. <laughs> Super soaker, yeah. You're gonna give yourself a bath setting. All right, Bucko status report. What's going on? I think I have a fix. A fix? For your speedo cable from the 700R4 from the three speed Saginaw. Three speed Saginaw has a much smaller cable, so I took the gear out of the Saginaw, cut it off, sanded it down square so it slides into the overdrive gear. So we'll drive your speedometer. Otherwise, Mark says I have to take tail shaft out and send that housing in for the. Listen, we're not thing. gonna do all I that. Know, that's why I'm sanding a piece of plastic <laughs> and twenty thousand to fit inside this. Little <laughs> but it should work. All right. We'll try it. I notified William. He's on his way. Uh, oh, he's already heading back. He should be here in fifteen minutes. He said. Oh, that's well, right. he'll be pleasantly surprised that dinner's done. Hopefully, he's pleasantly surprised his speedo will work. <laughs> That too. That too. <laughs> I mean, why does everything you guys are putting together so? Why does everything have tricks? Because we're taking a 1964 six cylinder three speed truck and putting a V8 in it with overdrive. So the cable's different. The speedometer is the same size compared to the transmission, and so is the 700R4. They don't change the different ends on the cables. So in order to get that to work, you have to have a custom cable made, which means taking the rear housing off. Okay, is our, Dad already cut it there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're already chipmunked yeah. uh, 30 chipmunk seconds ago. Zero patience. Poor Uncle Bucko. Good grief. Well, Jeremy got it fixed. The only problem is the speedometer is about 20 miles per hour off. That's better than what we had, though. At least now I can work with it and try and get the gear ratio and the transmission correct 
to make the speedometer work right. At the end of the day, I finally got a mother bottle to fill my nitrous bottles, my Malibu's fixed, the speedometer works in the C10, and I get the chipmunk Vicky. All right, what do you got for me tonight there, Squirrely? I've got glitter. Look at that. I've got black crew neck sweatshirts with pink glitter. No hoodies. Yeah, because sometimes you don't want your hair all bunched up. Sometimes it's nice to just not have a hoodie. So these are perfect. So those are new, new color combo. And I have finally have this. This is probably one of my favorite combos. And I have it back in stock. Very good. And what you showed already that the C10 stuff is on the way. So excited. And oh, the gasoline and freedom stuff. That is pre-order. We have 12 inch signs. We have eight inch mouse pads. We have three inch decals. Um, it's, it's a really cool, really cool design. So that's on the website. Whose idea was that? Yours. <laughs> that, that was the one I said I approved that I liked. <laughs> is that it? Um, Oh, there's coffee cups. I was coffee thinking, cups? Yeah, I was thinking ahead to Christmas because people I've had people tell me that they start their morning watching our show, husband and wife. They're like, we need matching coffee cups. Well, now you can get them. So they come in either mint green or the blue. Take your pick or get both. That's all. Mm. I'm just trying to edit. I'm just trying to edit.